Seth Moranis is fantastic. Another minor role that stands out. Another side character that is memorable and stands out. Even their side characters are just so well done that Mm -hmm. you don't even see them as side characters. They are main characters in their own right. Dude, that was supposed to be John Candy. I cannot picture (laughs) that character being anything other than like a filbert from from uh rocco's modern life that that he was he was such a classic nerd ramus wrote his character for john candy if you see like the sketches for the concept art it's all him the only reason why it didn't happen is because john candy wanted to play him with like a a very thick russian accent and wanted too much money so they had to pass on him (laughs) Hello, my name is Louis Tully. I am an accountant <laughs> here in New York City. I am yeah. come to be a ghost. So he's having a party at his apartment, and he really wants Dana to come, but she has a date with Peter, so she declines. So he's had a crush on Dana throughout the whole movie. He's been flirting with her, and the running joke is he keeps locking himself out of his apartment. Hey, let me in! It's Louis! Somebody let me in! Always gets locked out of the fucking apartment. It's interesting to think of when Sigourney read for the part of Dana, she came up with the idea of her character being possessed. That was her idea. That's right. She suggested that. Yeah. And they ended up doing it in this scene and playing it out. So she's sitting on her sofa and Dana sees like an outline around her door. And there's like glowing coming from behind it. The door is creaking. And all of a sudden, hands break through the sofa and forcefully hold her down. The chair spins, slides toward the terror dog, and is bam, right out the door, door shuts. That just sets up like, oh, right, you were watching a comedy for a few minutes. We're back to a horror movie now. Like, Yep, we're back to a horror. Even watching the like the behind the scenes, like you've got puppeteers back there, just like arms randomly, just like you can't see much from wherever you're like probably just – Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... Yeah, you can't see just like, all right, Let all right, me know action, I go. go. Now. <laughs> and one of the puppeteers, was they were nervous about grabbing her too hard. And Zagorny's like, no, just go for it. Just don't hold back. And one of them has a handful of titty. And she's like, whatever, just just grab me. Like, just pull me down and, and play into it and get into it. But it makes it look so much more real. So good on you, Sigourney, For for Yes, it makes it look real because if that was really going to happen – the hands coming up aren't going to be like, okay, I'm going to grab you here or maybe here, but I'm I'm trying to possess you, but I'm not going to grab a titty. So they just fucking, Hello, they just grab. Can I grab you here, please? <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> so they come up, they grab her. She slides towards the door. She screams, door slams shut, and now she's gone. Lucy's party is going on, and we see one of the terror dogs in the bedroom. The terror dog blasts out of the bedroom and chases Lewis out of his apartment and throughout a lot of Central Somebody Park West. Somebody left a bear in the apartment. Uh, All right, who brought the be- dog? Okay, who brought the dog? I gotta call the superintendent. There's not supposed to be animals in the apartment. And eventually, he gets trapped outside of a heavy, populated, bougie-ass looking restaurant. All and- windows. Everyone should have been yeah. able to see this. And the stop motion honestly really hasn't aged too well from this scene. But it was also rushed by the producers. So yes, I'll, extremely I'll kinda... rushed. So they kind of had to wing it, to say the least. And the animator who sculpted the terror dogs, uh, Randy Cook, was the uh, same stop motion animator who did Ed 209 from the original RoboCop. You know, the greats have a way of bringing themselves back. I love the Ed 209 stop motion animation scenes from RoboCop, so that's just another cool thing to to know about it. Peter arrives at Dana's for his date, and Dana is now possessed by Zool, the gatekeeper. She's waiting for the keymaster, Vince Clortho, which we find out is Louis Tully. You want this body. (laughs) You want this body. Is this a trick question? Again, uh, dude, this is another one of those scenes that it pushes the the limits of, of the rating. She's like, I want you inside of me. I want you inside of me. <laughs> Sounds like you have at least two people in there already. Might get a little crowded. <laughs> Sounds like you got at least two people in there already. Might be a little crowded. And obviously this demon really wants to fuck. <laughs> he just keeps hitting on him. Such a a mysterious quality for a ghost to have. I don't know why the ghosts are so horny. Uh, They want to give blowjobs. They just want to bang Ghostbusters. But she does a fantastic job at showing Dana's possession. Uh, She's snarling and growling like a dog, and she fucking floats like five feet above the bed right in front of Peter, and it just 
another awesome special effect when she's floating above and like her dress is like waving down yep. and like Peter looks underneath her and she just goes Rah! it scares the shit out of him. Well, then you have on the complete other end of the spectrum. So like Lewis gets dropped off to the Ghostbusters, but by the cops, the cops aren't supposed to have like a psychiatric ward or like a cell or something for that. You go, ah, yes, somebody's acting strange. Let's take them to the Ghostbusters. (laughs) Yeah, we thought this was what you guys do here. So we figured we would just bring him here. We picked up this guy. Now we don't know what to do with him. Bellevue doesn't want him and I'm afraid to put him in the lockup. And I know you guys are into this stuff. So I figured we'd check with you. I don't know. We're kind of <laughs> underfunded these days. I don't do with the psychiatric <laughs> stuff anymore. The mental problems, uh, it's on, that's on you, Phil. You bring up a good point, but I think there's an explanation to it because when they first get out of the, the car and they see Egon, he goes picking up or dropping off. So obviously this, is, this happens all the time. How many crazy people are being dropped off at fucking Ghostbusters headquarters? Do they have their own, <laughs> you know, lounge now for all the crazy people that get dropped over? Ah, uh, yes, crazy person. Take a number. We'll get to you in a second. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think it shows that it happens enough where is it is it Egon or is it Janine picking up or dropping off? One of them Janine. say that. Janine picking says, up or dropping off. Dropping off or picking up. Dropping off. Just a moment. So Lewis is there with Egon and <laughs> It just starts handing him objects for no reason. Like the the key master is by far not the smartest of, no. of the, the henchmen of Gozer, to say the least. So no. uh, would, at you, this would point, you like some coffee, Mr. Tully? Yes, have some. Yes, have yes, some. Yes, have some. Do you want some uh, coffee, Mr. Tully? Do I? Yes, have some. Yes, have some. So while this is all going on, uh, Walter Peck returns to the firehouse. Fucking Pecker. This time, he does have a warrant, and he orders them to shut down the protection grid, which blows the storage facility. This leads me to a thought I just kind of had. I would like to have seen a version of the movie where, because for all intents and purposes, like Peck is the real villain, uh, while Gozer is the bad guy, I would have liked to see the two of them together in some sort of way. Like Gozer, like if he was some sort of or something. Yeah, Gozer sort of using Peck to, ah, uh, yes, now I must shut down the protection grid and this will cause all of these things that I need to happen next. I don't know. Let us know in the comments. Do you think Peck would have been uh, a cool bad guy with Gozer or was he cool on his own? So naturally, Walter blames all of the chaos on the Ghostbusters and he gets them arrested. I love when he's he's screaming. He's like, I want these men arrested. These men are a criminal violation of the Environmental Protection Act. And this explosion is a direct result of it. Your mother. Your mother. Your mother please. <laughs> oh, fucking Egon, dude. Egon of is fantastic that, in this scene. Of all of people, all people to not, say your did, mother. Did not expect that from Egon. And I think that's what no. makes it perfect. We find out that the the cap on top of Dana's apartment building is a conductor to the doorway of another world built by a crazy cult leader who performed rituals on the roof intending on resurrecting Gozer and bringing upon the end of the world. Your girlfriend lives in the corner penthouse of Spook Central. So Dana the gatekeeper and Louis the keymaster finally meet and them being together opens up the gate to the afterlife and Gozer finally appears. And this reminds me that the biggest G in the Ghostbusters is Lewis Tully. 100%. Think about it for a second. Think about it. He fucks Dana Barrett, and he fucked Janine. Wow. It is canon that the terror dogs bang because yeah. it happened in the newer one with, with Paul Rudd and what's her name. Them fucking terror dogs sure do get it on the bow chicka bow. Mm-hmm. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! Can you feel that, buddy? Huh? 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 The mayor calls a meeting with the Ghostbusters, hoping they can explain all the ghosts and the chaos happening in the city. Lenny. And, uh... Mayor Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. Lenny. Everything was fine with our systems until the power grid was shut off by Dickless here. They cause an explosion. The mayor goes, is this true? Yes. This man has it's no dick. True. This man has no dick. <laughs> this man has no dick. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's what I heard. So they convince the mayor to release them in a trade to save the city, potentially. Now, now time out. The Ghostbusters were arrested. Did they even get a phone call? Were they denied their basic human rights? Are we going to let these things kind of slide? I don't think so. Justice for the Ghostbusters. 
hashtag justice for Ghostbusters. <laughs> it, it was the 80s. They did whatever the fuck they wanted. They didn't give him a call. The mayor is convinced to release them and is traded for them saving the city. And since they're the only ones equipped to deal with the situation, he, he goes for it. And the mayor kicks out Walter Peck and agrees to help the Ghostbusters. Yeah, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to send you a fruit basket. I'm going to send you a fruit basket. Sure. I'm going to get you a nice fruit basket. I'm going to miss him. All right. All right. They get like all these police escorts and fucking like military mm-hmm. and everyone lined up. And this is a great like photo opportunity and everything's all good. So we're all just like driving down the road like, yay, Ghostbusters. Do, 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 do. And then all of a sudden we pull up and it's like, bah, ground shaking. Bah, ground, 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 ground. <laughs> okay. Gozer, are are you that omnipotent that you can like feel them on your first floor? They don't even have to get up to the cap at this point. You're like, ah, uh, yes, I I sense them approaching. Mm, earthquake. Well, they pulled up to Spook Central. I mean, it is Spook Central. It's covered in lightning bolts and dark clouds, <laughs> and a giant crowd of people who all knew to come hang out here so they can go mm-hmm. Ghostbusters, 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 Ghostbusters. 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 <laughs> There was so much traffic from the front of the building that it shut down three quarters of Manhattan after that <laughs> from all the traffic that built up. What always confused me about this scene is that like the speed of the ground shaking and all of that was just mm. eh, too slow for me. Like it, we had just gone from like, yeah, celebration, celebration. And then it's like, ah, we have to wait for the thing to tilt this well, cut him some slack. That was those were all practical effects done I with hydraulic fucking lifts. <laughs> but again, you could speed up the pitch of a leopard growl to make a siren, so you couldn't mm-hmm. in editing like just play that part back just a wee bit faster. They fall in the hole. They recover and they make their way out of the rubble. <laughs> out, out of the rubble. Visually, it's great. And, I, I love how they yeah. and they had to. That's all practically done, like we said. So like they had, and they couldn't do that on the actual street so they had to build a separate set on top of that so like Mm -hmm. give them credit for what they did very cool just speed it the fuck up (laughs) speed it speed it up a little bit so they recover and they make their way to the top of the building where that temple is where do these stairs go they go up (laughs) they go up hey where these stairs go they go up the temple on the top of the apartment was all practical. It's a six-story fucking $1 million budget soundstage in Los Angeles. And at the wow. time was was the largest indoor sound set. It looks it because the scale yeah, they, of that thing is huge. They needed so much room for that set that the one they used was raised. You know how like um, after Hurricane Katrina, they raised all the houses by like the the, the shore. They literally lifted the whole soundstage and they built around it to raise it. (laughs) That's fantastic. So they make their way up there. And I love how Ray kindly asks for her to leave. Gozer the Gozerian. Good evening. As a duly designated representative of the city, county, and state of New York, I order you to cease any and all supernatural activity and return forthwith to your place of origin or to the nearest convenient parallel dimension. That ought to do it. Thanks very much, Ray. Are you a god? No. Then die. (laughs) Ray, if somebody asks if you're a god, you say yes. When someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. All right, this chick is toast. Best line in the movie. (laughs) Classic. Followed right after that, which is another great fucking line from the movie. Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. (laughs) Man. Now, my question is, when did they have time to, like, choreograph their proton pack stuff? Like, they they came out now and they're all just like, hoo, light them up, ba-ba. Like, they had all this stuff planned out. I would like to see them in rehearsals for this. Get them hot. Smoking. That whole thing, if we saw that, it wouldn't be as impactful when we did see it as the audience. Chances are they've done that dozens of times during like the montage scene, but they saved that for us to see for that scene. They attempt to throw a stream at her, but she vanishes. She makes them choose the form of the destructor. What if we pick Jay for Edgar Hoover? Jay Edgar Hoover comes back and destroys us. Which should have, right in that moment, made all of them think of J. Edgar Hoover. Because who's, who would say J. Edgar Hoover? And then you go, wait, who's J. Edgar Hoover? So uh, whatever they think of, the Destructor will take said form. And Ray thinks of 
the harmless thing from his childhood to stay puff fucking marshmallow man and then we see a ridiculous sight, which is this 120 foot fucking marshmallow man just walking through Central Park. No, no, making not his walking, way towards the just building. bouncing, jolly bouncing, yeah. just do, do, do. And again, all practical effects, dude. Like the, the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man suit was just all made of foam. They had one performer inside and just like Slimer, they had remote puppeteers for his facial expressions. And they, they just don't do it like that anymore. The whole set of like Central Park was all miniatures. The buildings were miniatures. Ah, oh, it looks so good. As an actor or as a puppeteer, imagine you just get to be Godzilla for the day. Like, ah, yes, put mm-hmm. on this giant suit. Look at all these miniatures. Okay, walk, walk two steps. Smash this car. Look over here menacingly. <laughs> Punch a building. Yeah. They light him on fire using the streams as Stay Puff climbs up the building King Kong style. And they actually burned 17 out of the 18 Stay Puft suits that they had during him climbing up the building. They were burned using chemical squibs and flash bulbs. So every time you see his face melting, it's all practical. It's like when his shoulders light on fire and everything, when he gets shot with the proton packs, it's all practical. I tip my hat to all that because I, I love the practical effects. Just imagine being the actor. Oh, yes, we're going to set you on fire for a sec. Uh, you might feel some uncomfortability. This really hot <laughs> suit that you're wearing is probably going to get a little bit hotter. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Everything's fine. We've got extinguishers. And if we say stop, drop, and roll, just try. The foreshadowing, which you called earlier, comes back, and Egon suggests that they cross the streams. I thought crossing the streams was bad. Excuse me, Egon. You said crossing the streams was bad. Cross the streams. Their plan is to reverse the particle flow and close the gate to whatever dimension they're coming out of. And Vankman goes, I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's do it. I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's do it. All four of them cross the streams as Stay Puft arrives at the top of the apartment building and the temple explodes. Stay Puft is melted. In a (laughs) nuclear style explosion that none of them should survive. Unless no. this goo that the, this Stay Puff goo that they covered themselves in is is impenetrable, which means Stay Puff would have survived. So it's clearly not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're, they're like, "Well, cool. Guess we survived that." Well, they're covered in marshmallow, so they got some <laughs> blowback at least. <laughs> speaking speaking of being covered in marshmallow, we get to my favorite fucking part of Walter Peck walking down the street throughout the madness, and all of a sudden just getting fucking doused in marshmallow yeah, which was like 70 pounds of shaving cream dropped from a fucking crane yeah and <laughs> it, they, they ended up trying it once on a stunt double and uh william atherton was like yeah no you're not doing that to me that was that was your take <laughs> take it or leave it <laughs> but they did light the load down they did make the load lighter and then he actually did it our heroes rise from the explosion. Uh, they free Dana and Lewis from the burnt remains of the terror dogs. The Ghostbusters save the world. Peter gets the girl. They celebrate with the people of New York and they leave victorious in the Ecto-1. <laughs> my my favorite part is like during the like after credits stuff, you can hear Lewis when they're all like going their separate ways after they get out of the building. They're all getting an Ecto-1 and they're trying to push Lewis somewhere else. He's like, Hey, I want to go in the car with them. I want to go with them in the car. <laughs> Does someone want to interview me? Does anybody want to interview me? I'm an eyewitness. No, wait a second. Time out. So, so Dana was a terror dog this whole time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she went into the the terror dog statue. She became a terror dog statue before Stay Puft came around, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they blow up Stay Puff, they blow up Gozer, Marshmallow goes everywhere. They had to pull Dana and Lewis out of the statues that they were still stuck in. How does Dana come out of the statue with Marshmallow on her? She should be un- she- unmellowed to the extreme because it's not like the statues were like dripping in marshmallows either. Where like, well, I'd have to okay, look back. I think she got. I'd have to look back, but I think she got the marshmallow all over her when Peter hugged her. I feel like she came out of the statue with like a piece of goo on her head. Hmm. Well, I got to keep an eye out for that when I watch it. How did they get goo in the statue? Yeah, that's right before uh, Winston's like, I love this town. I love this town. I love this town. (laughs) 
there was like grown adults chasing after Ecto One, like small children mm-hmm. chasing after Santa Claus. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, Ecto One, we love you. Come back, Santa. They're celebrities, man. They're celebrities, and you've been there enough to know the people of fucking New York are crazy. So if anyone's gonna do that, it would be the people of New York. There's some crazy motherfuckers there. So right before the movie ends, we get one final stinger. We see Slimer fly up to the screen. Black screen credits. Fucking love this movie, man. It is. Yeah. It is so good. And so for me, I was introduced to Ghostbusters through Ghostbusters 2. Uh, and yep. then eventually years later saw Ghostbusters 1. So for me, it is always fun to uh, find new things that I didn't know about the Ghostbusters from this movie because – this was not my first uh, introduction to them. Yeah, it's it's very similar for me. Uh, I was five or so when Ghostbusters 2 came out. The cartoon was already huge. Ghostbusters were everywhere. And then when the second one came out, I don't know in what order exactly I saw them because I was a kid, but I definitely didn't see the original one, obviously, when it came out because I wasn't even born yet. But yeah, Ghostbusters is is one of those movies, man. Just like you said, I notice something new about it almost every time I watch it. It's one of the most unique comedies ever made, and in my opinion, is a true masterpiece. And as far as franchises go, to be honest, no one expected that you know a little comedy movie from the '80s would be mm-hmm. the, like you said earlier, the cult classic that it is. It has definitely stood the the test of time. One hundred percent. This week, this week, the fifth installment is coming out. I don't count Ghostbusters 2016 or 2017, whatever year that was. Yeah, I don't know that it's canon, so. I don't think that movie is canon, but even if it was, I'm not counting it. That movie's fucking dog shit, man. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I I can't argue with you on that one. That is uh, a a very, very frowned upon uh, faction of the Ghostbusters uh, franchise. They made so many fucking mistakes and idiotic moves in that movie it it's almost it's hilariously painful and I'm, i am curious to watch that movie again i haven't seen it in a yeah few it's been years, a minute definitely. since i've seen it we it's should definitely we should watch that one yeah just for fun i'd be i'd be interested in destroying that fucking movie i think yeah that'll be fun and we'll probably get there one day yeah we'll get there <laughs> that's ghostbusters uh one of the greatest comedies of all time a cult classic and obviously timeless just like we said because it's literally turning 40 this year wow and or are yeah. you turning 40 this year no motherfucker i am not turning 40 this year close <laughs> to it but no fuck wah, you jess wah, 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 wah. yeah fucking bitch put it she, she added that to my notes Love you, Jess. Turning 40, turning 40 years old this year, just like me. Fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So appreciate you guys hanging out for a little bit, hanging out with Leo and myself, checking out the video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until the next time, from Leo and I, later, guys. Who are you going to call? Someone else. <laughs> Who are you going to call? <laughs> someone else that's actually one of my favorite lines from uh casper the friendly ghost when uh because at one point they call the ghostbusters in so uh dan Aykroyd in a ghostbusters uniform comes running out of casper's house and he goes who are you gonna call someone else <laughs> it runs off is that casper <laughs> the the live action movie yeah <laughs> holy shit i Dude, I, I, that's the one with like Devin Sawa, right? Devin, uh, Christina Ricci. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Christina Ricci. I definitely own that movie as a kid, so. but I don't remember the Ghostbusters scene. It's like a super quick moment in the beginning when they first get to the house. Well, I'm going to put that right there at the ending. <laughs> right there at the ending when you go, who are you going to call? Someone else. And yeah, just have Dan Aykroyd <laughs> finish it. Someone else. Yeah, yeah.